Today, we're having a look at this brand new base VST from Aurora DSP on the screen right here, the Laney Digbeth. Let's have a listen to what this sounds like. As you can hear, absolutely ridiculous, full bodied, clanky, but not like that glassy, shitty sound that you know a lot of the hyper distorted tones have these days that I really don't like. You guys know that. I really enjoyed crafting the tone with this. So, what I did is I used the submission audio Eurobase 3 for the DI, but you could obviously use a real bass if you want. And then I used the Laney Digbeth here to create the bass tone and mix it, which I'll show you what I did here in this song. Speaking of which, this song is The Rotting Sun. It's a song that I wrote a couple of years ago. I have made the multi-tracks available for this song on my website. You can buy them, you can get mixing practice, and you can use them on your portfolio or do YouTube content, whatever you would want to do. So link below for that if you'd like to grab these and get some mixing practice. All right, so let's talk about the bass guitar. I have to say that I'm extremely impressed with this plugin. You know, I'm kind of a creature of habit at this point. I kind of just use the same thing all the time because I know how to use it and blah, blah, blah. I really like working with this because of all the options. Now, when you first look at this interface, you might be like, uh, what am I looking at? What do I do? So what I'm going to show you here, just first, the interface, all the different options you have here for tone crafting. And really anything that you would want to do with a bass in, in terms of crafting a bass, it's all right here. It's like a one-stop shop. It's really cool with some really unique elements to it. All right, so let's solo the bass here. I'm actually going to turn the processing off, but I'll leave the limiter on just to make sure the loudness is the same. Uh, that needs to be on. All right, so my EQ is off and the compressor that I used. Uh, I'm just using stock plugins. In fact, this entire mix was done with free or stock plugins. Anyway, let's talk about the interface first here. Don't let all the knobs overwhelm you. It's actually quite simple when you look at it. Uh, down here also, really cool to look at. So if you start from the left, on the bottom down here from the left, we start the base processing sequence. The first thing that we have here is we can set a crossover point. This is a very popular thing to do if you wanna do the split base method. Now, normally, you know, like it's not been this way for a couple of years because there are other companies that have found ways to kind of make this easier. But here you can already set a crossover point from where, you know, you would want the low end to be compressed versus uh, what's happening on the high end, you know, for, for different processing, which is exactly what happens down here. If you look, you set your crossover point and then all the low processing to the low side frequencies of the crossing point you can mess with down here. And then all the upper frequencies and so on can be done with the high fork here. You can do uh, a single, what's the word I'm looking for? You can do a single processing change. So this is not uh, necessary to split them both if you don't want to. Now, let me just save this really quick. So actually, okay, talk about saving presets. Just go to the word save here and click save. And then it's down here in the user menu. There you go. All right. So for example, what I'm talking about, you have a ton of presets here. You have a one-way starting point, which we just have one way here. So everything is being processed without a crossover point or with one if you so choose. And then a two-way starting point, which has uh, all of the abilities to, to separate the processing from low frequencies to high and process them independently. You can see this is the starting point, which I actually started from, just trying to get used to the plugin and see what I want to do. And then I ended up creating my own uh, preset here, which is, it's just a really simple run of the mill type of uh, guitar tone, bass tone, but it has a nice slinky 
upper presence clank to it without having that really shitty high mid like glassy characteristic that I really don't like in bass guitar. All right. So here's my preset. Let's just start walking through here. So we have the low cut crossover high cut area. So my crossover here is at 300 hertz. Like I say, if I press play here, I'm affecting how many of the high and low frequencies are being processed by the upper or lower point of the processing chain. So uh, mine was at 300, so you can bring her up to whatever it was right here. So if we press play now, I moved it just to the point where I have all the low end, but I'm not getting any of the, um, you know, mid range of the DI. I'm, I'm cutting that out. I don't want to work with that. Right, so that's where everything's being split. And then from here, obviously, you start cracking the tone. So you have the ability to compress the low end, which I am doing here. Not a lot, about 4 dB, the compression of the low end, obviously, to try to keep it pinned without having a lot of movement. Now, with a MIDI bass that's been really well sampled, you, you shouldn't have to go crazy with the compression. This will be a really great tool to use if you have a very dynamic bass performance. I mean, like a lot of peaks and valleys, which are very bad with the low end because then your low end feels uneven and it starts moving and it can just make the balance of the mix sound weird. Also, low end can just fall out of the mix if you don't compress it and just try to keep it pinned, okay? Further on from there, um, I think I don't even, I don't even do anything here. Yeah, these are just stock settings. I just turned this on and it sounds like really good. Didn't touch it. But obviously here you've got an API style. You've got a BBE Sonic Maximizer style. Man, BBE, that's a name I haven't heard of in a while. Uh, and then you've got your classic compressors here, the, the 3A, and then your, you know, 1176 style. I don't even think I did anything to this. Barely even touched it. Uh, another cool thing here is you have this mammoth processing to really hype the low end of the bass. So let me show you what that sounds like. So if you have a real bass DI, for example, that's just really thin and not quite cutting it with low end energy, you can crank the maximize here to fatten it. Uh, I didn't do that here, obviously, because the, the instrument being as well sampled as it is, is really no point to it. Additionally, you could add some mid-range growl. Uh, I opted not to do any of this because it just didn't really add anything that I felt I needed in the mix. Didn't really want it. I didn't really use it. So the main thing that I really used here was the crossover point compression for the low end for the bass, right? Additionally, you can uh, place the low end, I'm assuming anyway, um, making an assumption here, below or above the uh, kick fundamental. And you can sidechain to, to do some more complicated wizardry studio magic to make sure the lowing is working together with the kick drum so on and so forth i really didn't do any of that because this is a doom metal song it's pretty slow there's no super fast double kicks going on anywhere didn't feel the need to do any of that okay um, a lot of the fun comes really now with the popping of the chain starting to add some effects some grind some grit and starting to make a pretty cool uh filthy but nice Base tone. Uh, actually, one thing I forgot to mention, we have the crossover types. This actually dictates, like, how, how can I say this? How abrupt the crossover blending is going to be. A is the most aggressive. It's like, kind of just like, here's your crossover and that's it. Uh, C is going to be the smoothest. So the, there's going to be more of a blend between the crossover of, like, the, of the lows and the highs coming together, okay? I went with A because I really wanted to have a, here's my low end and here's my high end, okay? But this whole section is very important going into the plugin because, for example, if you have a bass that has, you know, for example, not a lot of low end, you can really focus in on that and then use the low side chain here to add, you know, harmonics, you know, with the maximization and the growl and stuff like that. Another point, this kind of stuff would be really good to use, again, if you have a really weak sounding bass. It'll help fatten it up and obviously um, for smaller uh, um, 
uh, speakers or headphones or things like this. Okay, so yeah, the actual the the crossover page here really is probably the most important setting you can choose and work with because it's going to dictate how everything else moves through the plugin. Now I have the high channel here that I'm going through. So based on my crossover point, so it's 200 or it's 300 hertz and above. And we got a selection of pedals. Um, we've got the bass interval, which is an octave, or you can see here octaves. You can, yeah, basically like if you want to turn your bass into a synth, you can do that. I, you know, really didn't mess with that at all. Uh, we have another compressor that you can work on to tame. Like if you have a, again, this is really good for dynamic real bass where maybe the pick uh, control is inconsistent. You have some really loud peaks, you know, like in the one to three, four K area, that's just ugh, nasty. You can really start to compress that and just even that out, make it much more consistent. Uh, then we have bass distortion. And then uh, we have another bass distortion, but these are all actual Black Country Customs pedals. This is an Aurora uh, pedal that they created specific for this bass tone. And obviously, I wanted to have maximum distortion and a, like a, a grindy tone, but uh, and without being like dark, not dark glassy, but like 433 style with all that crap. All right, so let me show you what without. with was so adding a lot of just aggression and evil into the tone which i really like all right then we get to pretty much what you are expecting to see here this is all very simple all right now there's two options here that you have with different types of i guess we'll call it like distortion you have like a fet or a tube a fet would be like a solid state tube is tube right um and this actually it will make a big difference. Listen. I went with the fat just seemed a bit more immediate in your face, not as rounded. But that, that could also be because of the settings that I picked, right? Um, so obviously I'm not using the tube, so these don't really mean anything, but these are, you can set more drive. I think actually if you right click on this, you can pull this knob out and you can you can get more volume out of it. Uh, but pretty much just went through all of this. I s kept it on FET, didn't touch the volume, and I went mostly to tweaking the bass. Now, at this point, I had the guitars playing because I really wanted to see what the guitars were going to sound like with the bass as I was adjusting the EQ, right? So the first thing I did is I added a bit more low end, wanting to fill out the guitars because the guitars are really low gain, even though there's four of them. I really wanted to make sure I had the low end of the bass guitar blending nicely into the regular guitar. And then for the mids, there's actually four different positions of a mid cut you can do. Most commonly, you're probably going to do the setting that I have here, which is looks to be around four to 600 hertz, that area. And then you just pull the the level down or up in that particular frequency let me show what i mean so you can move the mid-range point up or down the frequency a little bit and this is pretty much going to be one of the best ways to find where the bass should sit with your guitars in the mix so if we put the drums in So even at just a low level of mids at this particular switch, the bass is just right there right in your face. Now I opted to do a little bit lower of a mid cut to scoop it a bit more. And I just personally liked how that was sitting in the mix and that's the one that I picked. Now the treble knob, very self-explanatory. Now here's one thing I'll talk about first, we have this tilt knob here. I think this is an amazing, powerful tool that is gonna solve a lot of problems for you. For example, like, let's say for example, you have the tone that you want, right? F5. And let's just, you know, mute these again real quick. Cars, come on now. I 
It's brown, it's fat, but it still has a little bit of that aggression on the top. In solo mode, sounds pretty good. If I put the guitars in, it's not quite aggressive enough at the top end. Now here comes the tilt EQ. Uh, if you look at this graph right here, a tilt EQ is exactly what it sounds like. There's a center point where the EQ is going to basically like teeter-totter like this. And I can basically shift the entire tonal balance of the bass to be more high frequency focused or low frequency focused. And that's what I did when the drums and the guitars were playing. But I just jacked the tilt knob and put it where I wanted it to be. If we listen in solo, a very s subtle shift, but I added just enough high energy into the tone, a tone that I already liked, that started to fit better and blend better in the mix. So just that little small tilt EQ budge makes this thing cut a lot more. Perfect, right? Now, this is really neat. Now, I don't really care what the calves are. When, I, when I'm using a product like this, I just, okay, I'm gonna solo it and listen. I ended up going for this uh, speaker setup because it had more of the low end and it's a bit smoother, a lot less honky and woody, like this one, for example. It's just really grinding on my ears a little. It's got like that upper mid-range bump. Again, that like 4 and 33 character that I just don't like uh, in general. Again, it has like an upper mid-range milky, masky frequency to it that I'm just not liking. I'd rather not EQ out what I don't like. I'd rather pick what I like already. So I opted for this one. Now... You have some uh, dynamics and some ribbing microphones that you can pick through here. I didn't even touch these. I just saw the vibe slider and I went, oh, okay. I think originally it was down here. I don't know, sound pretty cool, but the fact that I can, once again, kind of similar to the, Q, the tilt EQ, I can just, again, with the drums and guitars playing. There, done. I have a, again, I have a bass tone that I really like, but yet I have all these quality of life features here where I go, oh, I really like that bass tone. Uh, instead of having to go back and fiddle with all those parameters from the beginning to try and get what I want, I just have a vibe. I can go, you know what, I just think I need it to be a, a little bit brighter. Great, I can use the vibe slider. Done. Off to the next bit here, okay? Now again, this, I don't even think I touched this. I think this is all just preset. Didn't even touch it, okay? But again, you have the same things available here as we're right here for the top end of the chain, right? So you can do more compression, even things out, clamp down on transient peaks that are poking. Maybe you have a really hard pick stroke that just picks up everything else for some reason. You kind of squash that down a little bit while making everything a bit uniform. Uh, it's a very powerful, great thing to have in here. Now we have the end of the chain here where we can solo each individual band. Do that without everything. This is fantastic again because normally, if you were doing the split bass method for real, you would have to be going back into the tracks here and muting, soloing, and blah blah blah, and trying to manage a bunch of windows. This is a great big time saver, it's awesome. I can just solo both, see if I like both sounds independently and see how they're working well together. And then when we get to the last bit of the page here, we've got the EQ uh, limiter, but also this very important nugget right here. We can blend, again, the bass and the treble, we, and we can point it more towards one side or the other. So right now it's like 78, 22. All treble, all bass. So it's like your mix knob of being, being able to take both the high and the low and find a nice blend of it together.
and you would want to do this obviously with everything playing. Of course, you have EQ here. I think this is just the stock EQ profile that comes with it. Um, I would prefer to do EQ in the DAW. It's just a little bit easier for me and faster. So I just left it like this, obviously, because doing this kind of a cut is pretty consistent with what you would want to cut out anyway. So anywhere, like you see here, 350, 350 to like 600, there's usually some woodiness or boxiness in the bass that you generally want to dig out to make it more, sound more high five, all right? And then we have a slam limiter of explanatory okay and that is the essence of the aurora dsp uh dig bed in my opinion it's very intuitive easy to use and fast and it's one window this is what sells me on this plugin most of all because it's one window it's only i only have to concentrate on one thing i don't need to be looking at two different tracks opening up three or four different plugins trying to make sense of everything you know, get up like a, a dust analyzer and put it on a group track and then look at the high and lows and try to then then fader. It's just way simpler to do it this way. And I really like all of the options and the quality of life features that they've included in here beyond just, okay, here's some cool distortion pedals. Yay, here's the Laney dig bed. Woo. Being able to set your crossover point, go through independently above and below. And then even at the end, Fine, te fine tweaking the bass treble balance blend. It's pretty much all you could hope for in a bass plugin. I think this is very forward thinking from Aurora. I really enjoy it. And obviously the sound speaks for itself. This is with no EQ or compression, by the way. And as far as processing is concerned, again, I use stock Cubase plugins. Um, and I'm just doing the basic shit that you would expect to see, taking out a little bit of 200 energy to help leave room for the, the snare drum. And also, it can just get a bit rumbly in that area anyway. Uh, 500 again to remove some of the box in this. I can uh, A-B that for you. Do that in solo. Difference for sure. You can just see all this information right here. It's just unnecessary. It's just going to get in the way of the guitars and the snare. They can pull this energy out a little bit. Uh, it'll thin the bass a little, but honestly, you have all this low end energy right here, which is where the low end is really coming from anyway. So you just you want to clear up this area so the snare and the guitars can breathe. And then again, 500, get rid of those, those nasty boxy frequencies. Hear that? It's just nasty sounding stuff, you don't need it. So two, well, including the filters, very easy EQ moves, and the EQ is done, all right? Now for the compressor, the whole point for the compressor was just to try and keep the really long sustained notes thick and consistent, not just decay and die off right away. Because in the beginning of the song here, uh, these are all long notes that I want to be like, boom. And then as the note decays, it you know, keeps its energy, which is what the compressor is doing. Then we have the limiter, which very simple, just making sure nothing will go above zero. There's no errant peaks that might get in the way when you do some mastering. And then I set the level with the drums and guitars playing. And that is literally the extent of this plugin. It's not complicated, it's easy to use, has every feature you could most probably want in a base VST suite, all in one window, easy to use. I just said that I think I'm actually very impressed with this plugin. And I wanna say thank you to Dan personally from Aurora DSP. Dan is the owner of the company who reached out to me on Facebook and was like, dude, uh, would, you like, would you wanna make a video for this? I checked out the plugin and I was like, yes, absolutely. So uh, big thanks to, to Dan. He's actually sponsoring the video. I want to make that clear. 
Uh, but this plugin is really nice, and I'm going to be using it because I have been wanting to get some different bass distortion sounds as of late, so I was getting kind of tired of my normal sound, as it were. And this is going to be a great new tool in my tool bag. I'm very happy with it. Let's maybe check out a couple more parts here so I can get a bit more of an idea what this is going to sound like. Let's just do this bit right here with the verse. I it would help if I did this, yeah? You can see, or you can hear actually how the compressor is really allowing that big long decay note to ring out throughout the entire bit. So the lowing is always there. I really like that. And I like the soft presence, high attack of the bass that just, for me personally, I'm a fan of more of a round and high presence instead of that upper mid glassy sound. Yeah, it's a it's a thick bass. It sounds awesome, and I am already using it for clients. Highly recommend it, and then, yeah, definitely big fan. And if you go to the website, it's currently on intro intro price sale. It's a hundred bucks or ninety nine bucks normally. Right now for sixty, guys, this is a no brainer purchase. It doesn't matter if you have a real bass or if you're using DI bass from an, from a software library. This thing is amazing. It has every tool that you could want to use in a single window without any extra clicking or any extra stuff that you need to do. I'm going to be using this thing all the time. I've really enjoyed using it. I think Aurora did a really good job with this plugin and 60 bucks for everything that I just showed you, the functionality, quality of life features, and just that sounds awesome. Uh, I mean, that's well worth the money. So that's going to do it for me. Link for this is down below in the description. Let me know what you think about it in the next video.